Hi, Henk. Great to uh, to have you in uh, in our podcast today, um, and and thanks for for joining. Um, maybe the first question is: um, Can you tell a little bit about yourself and about uh, Trig Trigona Dairy Trade, so that we get to know you? Yep. Hi, uh, Jasper. Thanks uh, for having us here because uh, it's a nice uh, platform to present ourselves. I'm proud to be uh, invited. Uh, Trigone is an, um, an, um, from old days a uh, commodity trader in Holland, as there are many traders in uh, food products in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, maybe you know the VOC from the past. Uh, in the 1500s, 1600s, we were conquerors of, uh, of the East and the West, and uh, I think we were the inventors of uh, the trading. Um, and Trigone is there an exceptional uh, example of. Um, founded in uh, 2009, uh, made out of two youngsters starting uh, in their um, late 30s, Trigona, coming from uh, other trading companies and thought, well, what we can do here, we can do better for ourselves. And that's why in 2009 uh, they started with, uh, with uh, nothing. And uh, today we are growth towards a turnover of around 100 million euro. And uh, we are trading around uh, 40, 50,000 tons of ingredients. We do that with uh, 15 people, uh, six traders like me, and uh, six, seven uh, in the back office um, who are controlling uh, the daily business. Um, so that's a good combination. So the back office is um, very um, competitive and um, doing the job uh, very good. From the start, we were doing in commodities, but you see a trend in the last four or five years uh, that we convert um, into a plant-based uh, as well. So uh, we are and supplying some uh, dairy and also some plant-based alternatives to the to the market. And then the applications is uh, feed, food, and uh, baby food. That's okay. in the short uh, trigona and uh, very flexible and also fast. Sometimes you, you will not recognize that in our uh, meeting today that because that was delayed. But normally in business, <laughs> we, are, we are quite uh, fast. So we um, inform our customers uh, fast if it's possible or, or not. Myself, is uh, I'm a youngster of 59, also um, born in, in dairy, let's say. And uh, also the, the last four or five years converted to, uh, to plant-based. And I think my, my business inside uh, Trigona is now partly, uh, let's say, 50% dairy and 50% uh, vegan. Okay. And and uh, the ultimate question is always, uh, can can uh, plant-based be as as competitive as uh, as uh, regular dairy? Normally, from the resources, I would say yes. But uh, due to the fact that vegan is mentioned as a speciality, um and uh, there's no benchmark uh, yet um okay. prices could could uh variate a little bit from from dairy sometimes it's uh, quite expensive um but uh, in in vegan they're all also ex they're starting to be a commodity like like oat oat is really a commodity because yeah. um, everybody has oat milk and, and oat flakes and but uh, the special things like um chickpea or or whatever that could be still a little bit uh, challenging. And also in, in vegan, I have to say that um, it's more a processed food. I mean, if you buy uh, sure. butter, use butter as a bakery, then you know, okay, that's, that's milk and the leftover of, of milk is cream. Uh, we put that in our, our recipes and then we know what we have. If they, pr if they produce a, ve a vegan variant and they want to have a, a vegan butter, what is uh, do doable at the moment, then you see in the ingredient list, uh, maybe 15, 16 different um, parts in the ingredients. And um, right. that's that's complicated. And that's also making it a little bit more uh, in in price. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it, it, I want to, I want to tap a little bit into the, into the bakery. Yeah. Obviously, uh, dairy is, uh, is, is part of, of a lot of bakery. Mm -hmm. Um, and when, when people want to, to bring a, a new product in, in the market. Um, do you think that the, the, the pricing is a, is a key factor in success or how do you, 
see that or how does yeah. Trigona look at that? Uh, I, d I don't see the bakery uh, sector as an innovator in, in vegan and plant-based. That's more a, a following, follower. Uh, retail in Holland is the um, innovator in, uh, in, in plant-based. If you see the Dutch uh, retailers, specialty for, uh, with, a, with a blue and a yellow color, uh, these guys are really uh, pushing in the market. And um, even in their private label, they do more advanced things than um, the brand owners in, in the world. So um, private label, vegan in the Dutch retail, that is uh, the trend. And then I think when the volume of these products are rising, then also the bakery and, and, and the restaurant market in, in Holland will follow. I think when you um, visit a particularly Van der Valk hotel restaurant in Holland, the first page is uh, loaded with uh, vegan, but mainly vegan croquette. And you can uh, buy um, a, a croquette with um, a, a ragout, uh, but yeah. uh, you can also buy it with um, all types of vegan ingredients. Um, maybe also a, a vegan uh, Portobello burger. Um, yeah, these these things come in mainstream, I think, in um, in the sector. Uh, but if you want to have special products, I think uh, the supermarket is the place to be. And uh, when they started up uh, three, four years and growing in, in, in vegan, they um, bought whatever they were capable to have their hands on. And nowadays you see that uh, some of these products are com becoming a commodity. And then uh, the battle for the cost price is starting. And then uh, several suppliers are kicked out or have to reduce their um, yeah their margin inside uh, the, the process because in the early days there was maybe one or two producers who could supply the Dutch retail with um, vegan products. But nowadays uh, in every country there are several uh, producers of uh, vegan and meat and fish replacers, dairy replacers. So now it's really, uh, now the, the supermarkets are uh, again on the right side on the table. They, they can demand uh, a, a better price. How does Trigona position itself in in terms, and then not not only on the vegan side, but also on the mm. dairy side? Um, how how do you guys yeah, no. position yourself? Yeah, you know, Trigona is um, is a, a flat based organization, so we're very uh, quick. That also uh, we work um, uh, back to back. That means that we buy from the market and we sell. Uh, these days, it is not so wise, let's say, to have a big stock of butter. Because butter was uh, uh, two months ago, it was uh, 8,000 euro the kilo, and it's now uh, 5,000 euro the kilo. So if you have big stocks, then um, that's not very wise uh, to do. That also implicates yeah. that uh, we can, uh, in a decline market, we can be a little bit cheaper than uh, the colleagues due to the fact that um, we calculate always uh, today. Uh, so yeah. if uh, one to taste is ordering uh, two or three pellets with butter, then we don't say that this was the price of November. No, but that means we will focus on the price of January. And that gives immediately in, in this market an advantage. Uh, three years ago, it was the other side, of course. Um, then the guys with the big stocks uh, had the advantage. But mainly this advantage uh, stays in the wallet of, uh, of the supplier. Uh, we are very flat. So uh, what we buy is what we sell. And of course, we, we have our margins in between. But yeah. Um, yeah, we also give every week uh, effective thoughts so that our customers can see what the uh, uh, development is in uh, raw prices, raw ingredients prices. That is open information that is on our website. And uh, the people at the bakeries can subscribe. And then every week they will see, hey, the butter is this, the butter is that, and uh, the skim milk is that. That's all by commodities. Huh? In, in vegan, yeah. there's no, uh, no market... Uh, today um, yeah. you're really on top of the market of today right uh, yes. so that's our business model yeah yeah exactly so uh, um, is that uh, if you if you would if you would launch a new product um, uh, how would how would you suggest people deal with uh, for example in the bakery butter is quite important uh, yes. uh, they use quite a lot of butter um, what would you advise them um, in in that respect? 
If you are depending on on the market, um, on this today I would say fo follow the market, uh, don't buy uh, too much. But if you really uh, want to have a position and you know that in the coming year you need 100 tons of of butter, then of course you have to arrange something in a, a matter of volume and price. And that is also yeah. doable. We are also. I always say that um, sometimes it's an, an advantage when you have not own a factory. Yeah, because I'm yeah. I'm a trader and um, I can buy from uh, 30 butter factories in Europe. When you have a butter factory, then you can only sell your own butter. Uh, so that um, there's always um, an advantage yeah. and a disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Hey, Hank, that that makes me come a little bit to the to the conclusion. Eh? Um, if I look at uh, at pricing uh, with our customers, obviously it plays an important role, um, and I think also uh, the transparency that that we try to bring in pricing is something eh? both on the supplier side, as you know, uh, as on the customer side, we 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 try to to bring that as as open as possible, and I think that is also. Something that links back to to the purpose of one to taste, which is enabling the small and medium sized companies to be as effective and competitive as as the larger ones. Um, and it's great to have you guys uh, on the on the platform and and also supporting this uh, this vision. Um, and actually, it combines actually very well with also how you look at uh, at, at your business. So yep. thank you very much for, yeah, for you're today. You're welcome, uh, Jasper.